In today's edition of Overdrive, we revisit the launch of the Flow Champions Cup. We stop by the Flow ESPN Masterclass with Robbie Earl, learn the laws of football, and of course, see exciting highlights from the games in round one. All this and more coming up on the Flow Champions Cup Highlights Show. Welcome to Overdrive. This is the first in a series of seven highlight shows featuring the very best action and reactions and behind the scenes features from the Flow Champions Cup. This will be the fourth staging of the tournament which will see Paris champions and the Premier League teams playing in a knockout competition. That's Riot KO. This is how the competition will unfold. The Flow Champions Cup is Jamaica's supreme knockout competition played between the 14 parish champions and the 12 clubs in the local Premier League. The first round sees the 14 parish champions slugging it out with the six lowest ranked Premier League teams. The 10 winners from the first round then clash with the top six Premier League teams in round two. After round two, there's a draw for the quarterfinals which leads into the semifinals and ultimately the final. It becomes a war of attrition where the winners stay and the losers go home until we get to the final two battling for the prestigious Flow Champions Cup 2013. This year's competition kicked off with a launch at Barbican Field. The Flow Champions Cup is one of our many commitments to the economic and social development through sports in communities across Jamaica. And it has always been the catalyst for keen football competitions between 14 parish knockout champions and the much, their much vaunted Premier League rivals. Personally, I call it the David versus Goliath show. In as much as Goliath always win the war, the battles have always been fierce, and not for the faint of art. Players, clubs, and all those who participate in this competition, really at the end of the day, will be looking forward to receiving some real cash. Sponsorship in football is, is a partnership. And I am very, very, very late this morning that you have seen it fit to partner with us. We have to thank Flo, who again have recognized sport and football being at the heart of the community and bringing people together and how they can use our technology to, to further enhance that. But importantly, and, and one of the reasons why ESPN have become a, a favoured partner of Flow is that because of the technology that, that Flow has, so that we can have interaction with coaches and players during the course of the season. As we go forward, I certainly hope that Flow will be here for a long time to come. We look forward to sharing a great season of the Flow Champions Cup with all of you. Round one action got underway on Wednesday, with four games being played across the island. Here are the highlights. The stage was set for a mouth-watering clash at the Grays in play field when former St. Mary Premier League representatives Axum and Highgate United were drawn together. This was a hotly contested encounter from the first whistle. Both teams worked extremely hard for supremacy, and the fouls were plenty. The deadlock was broken in the second half, as it was Axum who surged ahead with a well-taken shot by Ricardo Davis in the 63rd minute. This did not stop the war of words and the physical play. Both sides gave as much as they got. It was from one of these fouls that the second chance was created. Davian Smith floated a free kick beyond the outstretched hands of the keeper, which lodged into the back of the net for a decisive 2 0 lead in the 69th minute, which they doggedly held on to the end. We're happy for the, for, the, for, the, for the win, but we know Axum can play much better than that. So we have to just go back to the drawing board and come back again for the next round and try to get another win again. Former Premier League outfit Portmore and United of St. Thomas welcomed Eagle Strikers who flew in from neighbouring Portland. And like white on rice, Portmore and were all over the visitors from the start. Ooh, 
They got the ball into the back of the net after a few minutes, but the effort was deemed offside by the referee. It was the visitors who went ahead against the run of play. The Portmoran keeper spilled a free kick and the approaching Tyron Austin ran on to slot past him and silence the crowd in minute 38. Port Morant worked hard to get on level terms as the second half began. The hometown supporters could eventually accept. When Kenton Williams tapped in a rebound from inside the box, Port Morant continued to boss the encounter and were rewarded when Williams scored his second goal just one minute before full time. Good game to both teams, knowing that our team is not, not in training now. And to know that we came here today and come out with a 2 1 victory. That's credit to my players. I just know that um, come ne the next the second round, we just have to put in some work to go into the second round. The visiting St. Anne contingent exchange were large and in charge at the beginning, as they look like the home side at Barbican Football Field. They created various chances and eventually went ahead when Dwayne Williams scored after only five minutes. The goal woke up Barbican, who launched numerous raids at the exchange goal. Barbican drew level as Dwayne Stewart fired home from close range in the 36th minute. Exchange could have scored more goals from the opportunities they created, but were let down by faulty finishing. The game went into extra time and the dreaded penalty. After a nerve-wracking series of kicks, the home team held their nerves to get a narrow 3-2 win. See, we're going back to the join board, we're going to do some training assessment of where we went wrong and then we can look forward for the next game. But I believe in the youth and the ability that they possess. In the top-rated battle of the day, Red Stripe Premier League contenders Cavalier and Humble Lion met at Effortville in Clarendon. Humble Lion were aggressive from the start. After a couple of good raids of the Cavalier goal, it was obvious that just a matter of time before Humble Lion would reap success. The goal came after only two minutes when Roberto Fletcher beat a defender and slid into the net at the near post. Visitors Cavalier were not daunted and continued to work extremely hard for the equaliser. They drew level seven minutes later when a square came over into the box from the left to beat the entire defence line and was tapped in by an approaching Claudius Blackburn. Humble Lion continued to pepper the Cavalier goal, but were let down by poor finishing. The home team scored the clincher when Amanda McLeod headed into the net from close range after 67 minutes. I was a little concerned, I have to be honest with you, but I felt based off of playing them twice last year, I felt we should be able to beat them because there are certain flaws in their team that um, we spoke about before coming on the field and it occurred again. So overall, you know, one can only say that we got the win that we came here to do. With the four winning teams advancing, here is the match results table. So far, four teams have advanced to round two. More football after the break. You're watching the Flow Champions Cup Highlight Show Overdrive. Like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash flowjamaica. Or follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash GoWithFlowJA using hashtag Overdrive on Flow TV. We'll be right back. This summer, all you need is Flow. Sign up for any Flow service and get free installation and much more. More TV to watch and enjoy. More minutes to talk and share. More speed to click and surf. Plus, 10 free cable your way channels. Free minutes to make local calls. And a free wireless upgrade. All new and existing customers who pay their bill in full by the 21st of the month automatically get a chance to win one year's free Flow service and the grand prize of a family vacation. Conditions apply. Flow. Watch. Talk, click. My business observer really matters. It keeps me up to date with new stories, the stock market, and the economy. And I can also keep my eye on my competitors. Subscribe today. What would I do without my study center? Now, course, to the South Coast. At the end of the week, I look forward to the Sunday observer in Wagwan. The Mavic Lock. My Sunday finance gives me a roundup of corporate, local, regional, and international news that matters. Every day matters. Subscribe today by going to JamaicaObserver.com or calling our nearest office. Welcome back to the FCC Highlight Show Overdrive. 
brought to you by Flow Prepaid, CBM TV, The Jamaica Observer, KLAS ESPN Sports, and Locker Room Sports. The game of football is governed by rules and regulations. Without them, we'd be overseeing chaos. To explain one of those important rules is former FIFA referee Dave Meikle in our special feature, Know the Laws. Today, we are looking at the offside law, which is sometimes misunderstood. A player is penalized for being in an offside position if he is closer to his opponent's goal line than the second last opponent of the ball. Now, what did I tell you? Interesting, wasn't it? Next week, we look deeper at interfering with an opponent or gaining an advantage. I am Dave Meeker, and you should always know the laws. To help you maximize on Flow's various cable and internet services, every week we'll show you a Flow tip. This week we look at Flow prepaid services. Did you know that Flow has a brand new prepaid service for cable and internet? You can purchase 1, 3, 7 and 14 day increments for prepaid internet and 3, 7 and 14 day increments for prepaid cable. Call or visit a Flow retail store to find out how to sign up for Flow prepaid today. In an effort to improve the standard of play in the Flow Champions Cup, Flow brought in the very experienced and special Robbie Earl to engage some of the participating coaches and players. Earl played in the English Premier League but gained fame and a slot in Jamaica's football history when he scored Jamaica's first ever goal at the World Cup Finals in France 1998. Here is the Flow ESPN Masterclass. The reason I'm here with the Flow Masterclass is to work with local players, local coaches, and just raise the profile of the Flow Champions Cup. It's working with what I call the two key areas of the football field, the goalkeepers, so we've got a goalkeeper from each team who's playing in the competition, and the strikers, uh, the people who are paid to put the ball in the back of the net. Those are the two areas that are key to the game, and so we're going to work on some skills, some development, we're going to look at some issues, and just trying to share some experiences and as much as I'll be teaching I'll be learning from people on the ground and hopefully with the coaches we've got a coach from each of the teams competing as well we can look at some uh, situations the coaches will actually be working with me and hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll all learn from each other. Masterclass is really about our partnership with our international partners ESPN um, we've done camps in the past with ESPN uh, this year what we wanted to do was something that was um, you know closer to home, closer to, to what we do. And the Flow Champions Cup gave us that opportunity because we moved the competition from late in the football season in Jamaica to early in the football season. Um, ESPN um, and Robbie Earl have become synonymous. He's now one of their best analysts. And so when we thought of the idea and we suggested it to them, they suggested Robbie Earl. Uh, we thought, what a great opportunity. He's a, he's a Jamaican, he's a former World Cup star for Jamaica. Um, he's, the, he's the first Jamaican to score in a World Cup final. Um, we couldn't find a better fit for this. What I'm hoping to do is to give some ideas, lend some experience, to, to share some, some, um, some of the issues with, with, with players down here and also to be accessible. I will have a, a Flow email set up, Robbie Earl at jamaicaflow.com, so I can keep communication. So although I'm here for one day, this can be an ongoing situation through a season for, for a striker, for a coach, for a goalkeeper. And so that's important that you know, we keep some accessibility. I always say that the football development is, is very like education. You have to go to primary school and learn the basics if you're going to get a master's one day at the other end. It's the same in football. We have to get the basics right. We have to teach our kids how to pass the ball, how to control the ball, how to, to have good tactics. Welfare, nutrition, diet, the, all, it's an holistic approach that we need to be, be educating our young people at 10, 11 years of age so that when they get to 18, 19, 20 and a part of our national setup, they know and can handle all the experiences and the pressures that come with international football. Former national player giving back to his country, nothing like it. 
Highlights from Thursday's games in round one. Coming up right after the break. You're watching the Flow Champions Cup Highlight Show Overdrive. Like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash flow Jamaica. Or follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash go with flow JA. Using hashtag overdrive on flow TV. We'll be right back. This summer, all you need is Flow. Sign up for any Flow service and get free installation and much more. More TV to watch and enjoy. More minutes to talk and share. More speed to click and surf. Plus, 10 free cable your way channels. Free minutes to make local calls and a free wireless upgrade. All new and existing customers who pay their bill in full by the 21st of the month automatically get a chance to win one year's free Flow service and the grand prize of a family vacation. Conditions apply. Flow. Watch. Talk. Click. Wake up to the KLAS ESPN Sports FM 89 Mike and Mike Show. Pep up your afternoon with Orville Higgins on the sports desk. Then spend your evenings with Stephen A. Smith and Skip Bayless on ESPN's First Take. Our award-winning program, Scoreboard, with hosts Juliet Cuthbert, Stratton Palmer, and Garth Williams, is up next. Join the herd with Colin Coherd from ESPN Radio after Scoreboard. KLAS, now an affiliate of ESPN Radio. Welcome back to the FCC Highlight Show Overdrive. Brought to you by Flow Prepaid, CBM TV, The Jamaica Observer, KLAS ESPN Sports, and Locker Room Sports. Twelve teams went to battle on Thursday. Here are the highlights. New Green Welcome Drugger Youths to Brooks Park in cool, cool Mandeville. The musicians serenaded the hosts with the shots from all angles from the opening whistle. Luckily for New Green, reggae youths were largely off-key. They were firing blanks. New Green came to life and gave as much as they got, shooting tamely and waywardly. They managed to hit the crossbar, but that was the closest that they would get to scoring. The winner came on the stroke of halftime when reggae youths or Shane Thompson booted in from the edge of the area. The second half was a replica of the first, except no goals to show. One love to New Green. Well, to say I'm, I'm elated. I'm, I'm, I'm elated. I'm proud of the guys. Flo, what Flo is doing is, here is very wonderful. And honestly, it's just a great feeling. This was a Clarendon derby with both teams looking for a win and bragging rights. Sporting Central versus Jamaica. It was an even contest from the start with everyone searching for the upper hand. There was nothing to show but an offside end. They peppered each other's goal with shots, but the balls flew everywhere except into the net. It was the unheralded Jamaica who went ahead when Kenroy Thomas booted in from 18 yards in the 32nd minute. The Premier League team Sporting Central were made to work hard every inch of the way. They eventually found the equalizer in the 75th minute through Jamal Power. End-to-end -end action continued afterwards as both teams sought the winner. The decider came from Sporting's substitute Hoggart Nugent in the 82nd minute, much to the delight of the supporters. I think the first half, the, the guys, you, know, you realize the guys did a few overpasses, but second half we got to drive. Sometimes they make changes to work, sometimes they make them, they don't work. But today it worked for me and I'm, I'm, I'm thanking God for that. I hope we continue winning and hopefully we, we get the million dollar. Premier League returners River United of Spanish Town journeyed to Westmoreland to tackle Sanders White House, best known for their warm and friendly hospitality and sometimes their football. Shortly after kickoff, it was a real shock when the hometown Miller scored through Kemar Dawkins in the second minute. The elaborate celebration was warranted. Rivoli were down, but not out. They pressed forward with renewed confidence in search of the equalizer. They actually got the ball into the net, but it was deemed offside by the match officials. The equalizer came from a good move down the right side. The cross was made and the ball tapped in from the left by Valentine Gardner in minute 32. Both teams continued to fight for the winning goal. This became physical and the referee had to issue red cards to two combatants. As the showers came, so did the decider when Michael Bridgen side-footed into the net from close range in the 59th minute to give Rivoli the close win. It's a very good victory, you know, because we have our first Premier League game in over three years on Sunday. 
So to come to play this match on Thursday, the floor knockout, and to actually win, it's a confident boost going into Sunday's start of the Premier League. The cross parish derby between Holland FC of St. Elizabeth and Savannah of Westmoreland was highly anticipated. The soggy field did not help the quality of play, but the players tried hard to entertain. The former Premier League campaigners Savannah were the first to attack. But it was Holland FC who went on the board first when Ronique Haynes slotted in from a melee in the 15th minute. Holland continued to attack and went further ahead in minute 28 when Romain Lewis headed into the net from close range. Both sides battled in the soggy conditions, which by then looked like a large pig pen. Savannah eventually scored a consolation goal in the 72nd minute through Ron Daly, but it was too little too late. The 2-1 upset was confirmed. I think the team defended well and we have to appreciate defence in football. That was important today. Black Stars were in devastating form when they met Logwood. Logwood were quite confident at the start and they looked like they would offer some resistance to the St. Anne outfit. But Black Stars were in no mood to share the spotlight. They would ram in goal after goal after goal. Marcus Sims scored the first with a sweet left foot and Ricardo Reed headed in to make it 2-0 at halftime. Jermaine Fletcher rammed in the third to get the fans on the sideline jumping. Davian Ash then registered the first hat-trick of the campaign to take the score to 6-0. And then Dwayne Brown rounded off the scoring with another from close range just before the final whistle to make it 7-0. So what happened basically is that we just come out here and say, listen, we play constructive football. When we get the chances, let us just finish them off inside the box. This was a battle of the cities played out at West Pow Park in Montego Bay between hosts Montego Bay United and Rockford from East Kingston. This was a fairly good performance by the Premier League campaigners who put the visitors firmly in their place. Montego Bay worked hard for the first goal, which came from German Wozencroft in the 17th minute. As the rain came down, the goals poured in. Ronaldo Rodney scored with a shot from outside the area for a 2-0 lead at the half. Rockford worked tirelessly to pull one back, but they never troubled goalkeeper Jacomina Barrett. Alan Ott in the 49th minute, Graham Green a minute later, and the Bahamian Leslie Sanfleur near the end ensured Montego Bay secured an easy 5-0 win. We were, we were superior to them. We were more technical. We moved the ball much faster, and I thought that made a difference today. Six teams advanced to the second round. Here is the match results table. After the first round of games, the draw to determine the second round of games saw the 10 winners combined with the top six teams in the Red Stripe Premier League. Here are the matchups for next week's games. On Wednesday, September 18th, Harbourview will meet Rivoli. Tivoli will take on Boys Town. Sporting Central will tackle the Black Stars and Axum against Reggae Youths. On Thursday, September 19th, Mo Bay United tackle Holland. Portmore will host Barbican. Waterhouse take on Port Morant. And Arnett Gardens look to tame Humble Lion. With round one complete, here are some of the goals from both days. enjoyed the first episode of Overdrive, the Flow Champions Cup highlight show. You can catch a repeat of the show on Monday mornings at 8.30am right here on CVM TV. Also, further repeats will be on Flow 100 from Tuesday to Saturday. Check your Flow channel guide or Facebook page for program times. Check the Flow Jamaica Facebook page for match fixtures and results and join the conversation on Twitter. And remember, you can check your flow bill online anytime at myaccount.flowjamaica.com or channel 800, the Flow Bill View channel. We'll be back next Saturday, 
2.30 p.m. with the Best of the Flow Champions Cup. See you then.